Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. And in this video, I'm gonna go over this refinery slash power plant build that you can see behind me right now. One of the main output of this refinery will be reformat gas, which is used to run all of the different combined cycle gas turbines that you can see in front of you. And in total, these will produce over 10 million HE per second, making this entire refinery self-sufficient. You will also get a whole lot of other liquids. Basically, that is what this video is for. And this build runs by maximizing the output of a vacuum refinery so you can scale this build up and down by using more or less fracking towers so without any further ado let's get straight into this video so let's start with one of the main components which is the hydraulic fracking tower it is sitting on a bedrock oil deposit without any upgrades and i have placed some flow gauge pipes to measure the amount of fluids being produced per second so if we start supplying it with power now we can check the amount of crude oil which is being produced at 100 millibuckets per second and natural gas at 50 millibuckets per second. By the way, natural gas is constant because I have done that in the configurations. Otherwise, the natural gas production will keep on fluctuating. But it doesn't really matter that much as crude oil production will remain constant. And power consumption is 100,000 HE per second. So if we speed this up using a speed free upgrade, now the production of crude oil will go up to 400 millibuckets per second and natural gas will go up to 200 millibuckets per second and finally fracking solution consumption will go up to 40 millibuckets per second power consumption will also go up to 175,000 he per second now crude oil will be consumed at a rate of 2000 millibuckets per second by a vacuum refinery at its maximum speed so for producing 2000 millibuckets per second of crude oil we will need five hydraulic fractioning towers with speed three upgrades but we have to remember that these towers will not only produce crude oil but also natural gas so this will produce in total of 1000 millibuckets per second of natural gas if you have it at a constant rate of production so to consume it perfectly Place down two flare stacks, one with a speed 3 and effectiveness 3 upgrade and another one with an effectiveness 3 upgrade. And that will consume 1000 millibuckets per second and will give you 50,000 HE per second of power. So that's natural gas taken care of. Now we can start pumping all of the crude oil into the vacuum refinery, which will give us vacuum heavy oil, vacuum light oil, reformat and sour gas. So for processing vacuum heavy oil and light oil, we need the fractioning towers. So heavy oil requires total eight fractioning towers and light oil requires total four fractioning towers. And this is how I have arranged them in a column of four and two. And do remember to separate them. And by the way, for output, you need to connect all of the towers like if you want to input anything in the fractioning tower, then you can connect a single tower with the fluid pipe and it will transfer the fluid to all of the towers basically. But in order to get the output, you need to connect all of the towers like this. Otherwise the fractioning tower will just clog up or a section of the tower will actually clog up. So now let's come to the vacuum heavy oil, which gives us heavy heating oil and industrial oil. So in order to process both of these, we are going to use the catalytic cracking tower. So let's start with the industrial oil first. It will require total two catalytic cracking towers and will give naphtha and petroleum gas. As for the heavy heating oil, which is produced in more amount, you will need total three catalytic cracking towers to process it completely. And this will give you heating oil and reformat gas, which is one of the main outputs. Now for the vacuum light oil, it gives kerosene and reformat gas. Both of these don't need to be processed any further as they are directly used for power production. So here I have kerosene coming in and going into these four turbo fans like this. So if we take a look at the rate of production for kerosene, it is 280 millibuckets per second. So for consuming 280 millibuckets per second, I have three turbo fans with afterburner 3 upgrade and then we have one more turbo fan with afterburner 1 upgrade so that consumes 80 times 3 which is 240 plus 40 which is 280 millibuckets per second so that's kerosene taken care of 
and we can store the reformat gas in another tank and this tank will act as a buffer between the production and the combined cycle gas turbine now we have taken a look at the output so heating oil by the way can also be stored in a tank it will be used later on and reformat gas as i showed you will directly go into this buffer tank here so heating oil and reformat gas which is the output for the heavy heating oil and industrial oil naphtha and petroleum gas so naphtha actually goes in a catalytic reformer where it will be processed into reformat petroleum gas and liquid hydrogen which is common amongst all catalytic reformers so liquid hydrogen will be given out by all of them now the petroleum gas produced will go into another catalytic reformer giving us unsaturated hydrocarbons and reformat gas basically the goal of this entire build is to produce as much reformat gas as possible so we will store the reformat gas in its tank and unsaturated hydrocarbons in another tank now that takes care of five catalytic racking towers two catalytic reformers and total 12 fractioning towers so that's one major part of the build covered now let's take a look at reformat processing so for processing reformat we will need another three catalytic cracking towers and this is being produced at a variable rate which kind of sucks but oh well and reformat will give unsaturated hydrocarbons and reformat gas both of which we are storing right here so reformat will also be produced by the way by catalytic reforming of naphtha so we can pump this back into our three catalytic cracking towers so petroleum goes one side reformat goes the other side and yeah basically this catalytic reformer has been taken care of now as i told you liquid hydrogen will be common amongst all catalytic reformers we are producing it at a rate of 75 millibuckets per second because we have total three catalytic reformers in this build and you can use liquid hydrogen to run an industrial combustion engine to get some extra power basically all eight of the catalytic cracking towers will also require steam which is being produced or basically consumed sorry at a rate of roughly 3000 millibuckets per second you can easily produce it using three boilers and normal firebox coming to our last component it is our gas and when this gas goes in a catalytic reformer it gives sulfuric acid and petroleum gas along with liquid nit hydrogen now in here i have the petroleum gas going into the catalytic reformer but you don't need to do that actually because petroleum gas and sulfuric acid when combined will produce fracking solution which is required to run all of the hydraulic fracking towers so it is pretty important that you use this catalytic reformer to produce the fracking solution and for this build you will need roughly seven combined cycle gas turbines all of these have reformat gas ng lubricant and also to produce extra power you have water being consumed or being transformed into dense steam so that dense steam then goes in a turbine and normal steam in another turbine and this gives us some extra power and by the way the entire low pressure steam of this refinery can be processed via a single auxiliary cooling tower now i have outputs of all of these combined and right now it is giving us roughly 12 million hg per second without running the seventh gas turbine now the reason i am not running the seventh gas turbine right here is so you can see that the tank is filling up with reformat gas right now if i turn this on then the gas or the tank will empty so basically whenever you want to empty the reformat gas tank you can start the seven turbine and once it is empty you can turn it off so that it can fill up again and by the way heating oil and unsaturated hydrocarbons when combined will give engine lubricant which is required to run all of the combined cycle gas turbines and as they are produced in excess i am also burning them in a flare step so basically this was the overview of the entire refinery and the ratios the machines that you will need if you are going to produce crude oil in this amount you can reduce or increase according to your production so i hope this helped peace out
and stay safe.